Today we're going to be taking the last of the 1912 train rail and turning it into cross bean hammers. But the story doesn't start in my shop, it actually starts at Ethan Hardy's shop. First step in forging the hammer is to get a block of steel out of the train rail. I call this the billet. You have to first cut the train rail apart, grind the train rail, and then forge it into the exact dimensions that you need to create the hammer. I don't know anybody who can process train rail better than Ethan. Between his skill and his 600 pound steam hammer, he can produce accurate billets at a fraction of the time that I can do it at my shop. This is so important to have a good billet to start your hammer from. We're back from Ethan's shop with the three pound billets. He's gonna keep working on the two and a half and two pound billets. And we're gonna see if we can make a hammer here. So the first thing I do is I mark the center on every billet. Then I use a center punch. Yes, the 50 cal center punch and the 308 center punch are available from my website. The next step is I use two more center punches that are designated for hot work to increase the depth and clarity so that when I go into the upsetter, I know for sure I'm getting that eye centered on this billet. Now I go into the upsetter and my first punch in the upsetter is a round punch. I run this operation from both sides, then I'm going into the power hammer and this is where I start to flatten down the bulge and this starts to create parallel sides to the eye. After that, I come into the upsetter with a second drift. Now this one has flat sides on it. By utilizing that flattening under the power hammer, it self-centers itself and makes itself parallel. So I don't have to worry about that either. Uh, it's kind of an extra step, but it does give you a really sweet hammer eye at the end. Again, coming back to the power hammer, flattening out the chub, and getting rid of any of the suck down from the punch. I have to check my dimensions pretty much after every single operation to make sure this hammer stays on spec. I do a lot of handwork. I found that this is just the best way to create the eye, to have it the cleanest. So here at the anvil, I'm putting in a, the first drift, which is a series of three of them. And I come in from both sides. I found that to be critical to creating a crisp eye. So as I come in from the second side, I then go to the fly press. It's a really nifty tool for this type of work. I'll knock the drift out here and I'm back to the power hammer to clean up any of the bulge and suck down that's gonna happen from this operation. This is my second drift that I do by hand. I do it at the anvil and then the same dealio, I run over to the fly press, same as before, run it through, back to the power hammer, flatten it out, clean up that billet. Coming into the upsetter, I use the fancy tooling that you've seen me build in the past videos. This has been working pretty good, honestly. The, the thing that I've had to do is actually slow down. I take more bite sizes than doing it in one go, even though the upsetter can. I find that if I go too much, I can't create a nice straight peen. So I do a combination of between upsetter and power hammer. Uh, it, I'm trying to get it in two heats collectively with multiple steps from the upsetter to the power hammer. Uh, it's pretty fiddle faddly actually, but um, if you do it right, it, it does work pretty smoking good. The final drift is now, but I actually cycle this two times. So I'll put it in under the fly press, go to the power hammer, flatten it out. That creates a little bit more growth. And then I go back and run it through again. And you're like, how many times do you put a drift in this hammer? A lot. It's actually really ridiculous, but I, I think it's really worth it. This is my favorite part by far of the whole project. I could do this all day long and be the happiest guy ever. It's just under the fly press with this janky little jig, but it creates these super crisp facets on the hammer that feel so good to lay down. Back to the power hammer, this is the last time cleaning up. Final check on dimensions. Off to crack off that nib on the front of the hammer. So this is where I'm at with the three pound cross peen hammers. And this is the start to the end and um, it's been a rough go, but things about here are getting better. And the last two, like, totally locked in, really confident that... Actually, wait, now I... No, 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 that... Wait, is that good? <laughs> no, this can't be happening. No. We're pretty good. We're pretty smoking good. This is what they look like as forged. A three-pound cross-bean hammer. 
And here is what we're gonna do. Peter from the Cross the Shop says, hey Tim, why don't you just turn that 90 degrees in the jig and try making a straight peen? So this is called a cross peen hammer because the peen goes across your hand. And if it's a straight peen, it would be like this with the eye. And I bet ya the jig could handle that just fine. So we're gonna try making some straight peens. Oh, come on, check that out. I can't believe how good that worked. We're going to the grinder. I'm gonna start processing these guys. Isn't that cool? Turned out so good. Are you just waiting for me, Peter? To... Am I stalling you out there, bro? <laughs> All right, I'll get over it, stop talking. Just send up on the fly press here to start stamping the date in the head and uh, hopefully it'll go tickety boo. <laughs> you haven't heard that one for a while, have ya? Ooh, that actually looks super cool. Hopefully I can deliver on the rest here. Setting up to do the serial numbering. And I've given this quite a bit of thought. We're in a little bit of an interesting spot right now because this hammer here, even though this is banged up pretty bad, is the first 1912 series I did with Ethan. So this is the collaboration hammer. His touch mark and mine there. It is weird to have another series of the 1912 with the cross bean, but I'm gonna call that its own series and we're gonna start this one from one as well because the cross peen on the three pound is gonna start on its own serial number. The straight peen on the three pound is gonna start on its own number. And then when we get to the two and a half and then the two pounds, those are all gonna run on their individual numbers, even though it's gonna be pretty short because this is the last of the 1912 and then we're starting to the next thing. And that's as clear as mud, but I think that makes the most sense. So what we're doing here is I thought it would be a good idea just to Check the hardness on these hammers. So this is a sample, this is a, just a rough prototype here, but I quenched it. I haven't tempered it yet because I want to see how hard it is at its hardest state. And if you haven't ever seen the hardness tester before, I've got some videos on it. Let's give this a shot here. Sending it here for the first test. All right, so that should be our first hardness here. See where she lines up at. 35 and a half. So this is actually a little bit interesting here. You can see these little 
ping marks. That's from the hardness tester. It actually pushes in that distance it goes in, determines how hard it is. This is the softest part of the hammer here, right where my finger is, in these tings here. And they're sitting at 35. These out here took the average and they're 44. That's Rockwell C. So it's actually quite a bit harder, which is great for us in the hammer application. I did one up here. This is the thinnest material on the hammer and that's at 53. I didn't understand that this was hardening up so much more than this. What's interesting is on the axes. So this is the hatchet. This is the ax. I was for the longest time fully quenching these and when we would wedge up the handle, so I would quench it and temper it, when I would wedge these up, they would crack right in here to the point that I determined it was because the train rail was just too hard in here. So I've gone to now a partial heat treat, meaning on the axis only from the blade or from the blade to here is hard. All this is soft. I still do a full quench on those guys because they seem to work fine. But anyways, that's because this thin material gets so thin on these axes, it gets so hard, way harder than back here. Just interesting, right? So what we're gonna do with this information is um, I'm going to throw this in the temper oven and bring it up to a bit of a temper and then we'll ping it again and see how it compares. I don't really wanna lose the hardness but I want to take the edge off so this thing doesn't crack on us. We're going to let that cook for three hours and then we're going to re-hardness test it. Let me take this opportunity to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is the go-to place for creating a website. Whatever type of website you need, they have incredible templates that are going to get you going right out of the gate. If you're doing e-commerce website, they have all the tools you need to sell and successfully ship your products to your customers. If you need to get a domain name, you can get that right at Squarespace. If you need to sell something, you can get a point of sale, connect your Squarespace reader to your Squarespace app, make that transaction happen. So if you're looking to get your passion project started or you wanna just tweak, modify your website, make it look a little sharper, head down to squarespace.com slash timd, link is down below get 10% off your first purchase. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. First ping before the tempering was 53 and the second one right here is 51. I just ran across the back here. I didn't go up here because we knew that that was softer and it was 44 before tempering and now it's 42. So very small change. I think that's really good actually. And uh, yeah, okay, in the light you can see a little bit. Of, a little bit of the straw color. That how did that axe fall? Oh, is this promo? Peter, are you trying to force us to tell there's availability on these guys right now? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I think we're in good shape here. I'm gonna run with that and uh, let's put them through the heat treat. I'm off to Pete's shop. We're gonna be uh, working on the hammer handles today. Mr. Day. How you doing? How are you doing? Hey. <laughs> Thanks for having us out today. We spent quite a bit of time setting up these two jigs to use router bits to cut about like 90% of the handle. This is gonna be our first production run, so it's exciting to see how it all comes together. So this is stage one. So the handle is profiled in this way. This, this in here gets cut off. So that's just part of the making of the handle process. So this is now finished on the router. And then we'll go and clean this up a little bit by hand. There's some, you know, it's, it's essentially roughed in. We are going to start putting these on and seeing how it goes to see if we need to do any adjustments to the template.
this is where we're at. Different weights, straight peens, cross peens. We still have a whole bunch in the works here, but I wanted to show you the lineup. The collection, the set, yes, that sounds cool. We've got the three pound straight and cross peen here, the two and a half pound straight and cross peen here, and then the two pound straight and cross peen here. So I didn't take the face up to like a crazy, crazy mirror finish because there's no point in going further than this. As soon as you use it, you're gonna lose that. Look how good that looks though, right? So this is uh, number 10 in that weight class and variation. I actually love how the straight peen looks. I, I didn't even know how much I was gonna like it. Used to looking at the cross peen, right? But super cool, so cool. The overall length of the hammer is about 16 inches. And then if that handle, if you find that that's too long, after you get past the neck, there's no difference in the shape of the handle, the ergonomics. So I figure you could just trim it down a little bit. I think you're gonna like it the way it is, but I know everybody's got their own feelings about handles, so it's no big deal if you wanna trim that a little bit. This is the way I wanna ship your hammer out in a box like this. You know I love that stuff. But I thought maybe some of you might want to buy a set or this weight and that weight and it would be cool to ship those together and so I'm going to go make boxes off of your order. So if you order two hammers, we're going to make a box fit two hammers. If you order the whole lineup, that'd be awesome. I guess that's a lot of hammers. But I'll make a, I'll make a set up, a box for you is essentially what I'm saying. I have a couple of the 1912 Blackhawk hatchets ready to go, available on the website. So if you're looking for one of those, take a look at those. Man, look at that set, hey? Ah, oh, it's just so cool. Ethan informed me that we actually didn't use as much train rail as we thought we were gonna use for the hammers. So we still have a little bit of the 1912 that'll be trickling out either in axes, hatchets, or hammers, but I'm not gonna be making any big video about that. This is kind of the last stand for the 1912. And so thank you to all of you all of you who have purchased something in the 1912 series, it's been the biggest series to date. I'm so grateful for every one of you to be able to send it out to you. Thank you. And so now with the hammers done, there's only one thing left to do. And I've been waiting to do this pretty much from the day I began blacksmithing. Back when I was a young teenager, I dreamed that someday I would have a shop full of tools that I had made with my hands and that I would use those tools to create things I love and then send them out of the shop into the world for other people to use and enjoy. Today I get to see a small piece of that dream come to reality. Back when I was a young teenager, when I thought about these tools and having them in my shop, I thought that that would be the pinnacle of success. And now I realize that this is not a pinnacle, this is just another small stepping stone in the never ending progression of learning a craft.